Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm just going to say a few words because I'm curious to see what the government has to say about this. Um, I think that there are obvious downsides to being a jurisdiction um, that is more highly taxed than others. I think the member has enumerated those well. Um, but I also think it's important to look at what we're talking about here. So from the perspective of our party who has put forward over the past couple of years in particular, a number of programs to deal with the inflationary pressures we're under, the benefit of indexing tax brackets, I think it is important to note, would be concentrated at the high end of earners. So households earning under $23,000 a year, no benefit. Twenty-three to thirty thousand, thirty-three thousand dollars a year, nineteen dollars over a five-year period. Middle and high-income earners also would see a moderate increase. So those making seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year, maybe some of those nurses we are talking about, we're talking about a savings of about fifty dollars a year. Um, so I think, again, we do want to be in concert with other provinces. We don't have a problem with it per se, but of course our focus is on a progressive tax system so that people uh, who can best bear it uh, pay the taxes. Um, and you know, the reason that we feel that way is because we understand, and I've, I've heard the finance minister speak to this, that you know, their, that revenue is important, and then that revenue helps the government to do the work it needs to do. The challenge uh, in this particular circumstance is that the current government um, spends those revenues with almost no oversight. <laughs> And so it makes it very difficult for us to understand if they are in fact doing the work that Nova Scotians need most. So we go through a budget uh, you know, process every spring, and then you know, the, the, I've heard ministers say, oh, the opposition likes to attack us for appropriations. Over a billion dollars in spending outside of the budgetary process is not democratic. Mm -hmm. uh, we bills that we have now before this legislature um, are uh, doing things that are reducing uh, the democratic nature of the way that we conduct our business. And so I know that this bill doesn't directly deal with that, but I think it's important because I think that as a party, uh, we do believe that tax revenue is important. We do believe in a social safety net. We do believe in making sure that government can provide people, that when we push for housing, we're also saying, yes, we understand government needs revenue to provide that, and they should. When we talk about the need for better health care, we think we understand that revenues are required for that, but we also believe that that goes hand in hand with transparency, and the transparency is what we don't see. And so that is challenging. And I think that if we wanted to cut straight to the chase in terms of actually helping people with the revenues we have, we could do it by things like a universal school food program. We could do it by unfreezing income assistance rates. Mm -hmm. We could do it by you know, any number, the affordable income tax credit, this is something that has been shown to help people immensely. It's a credit, it's not a rebate, uh, and you know, at the front end, it's, it's hugely helpful to people who have a challenge in meeting their bills. So I think that, you know, these are important issues. I think that these are issues that um, were not dealt with during the eight years that the Liberals were in power mm -hmm. and certainly could have indexed tax rates but didn't. Um, they're not being dealt with now. Uh, and, you know, as to whether that's something we need to do, again, if we are talking in particular, you know, the one compelling argument I heard was about attracting healthcare workers to this jurisdiction. We need workers. We have labor force issues. If we want to attract physicians, if we want to attract people, we have to have a competitive environment in which to do that. We understand. But we also think that if we're really talking about the cost of living and we're really talking about helping working families, seniors, people who need that help, um, that there are a number of bills on the order paper uh, that we have put forward over the last couple of years that we think uh, might be a more direct path. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
I recognize the Honourable Minister for Finance.